so my last video you know that we have two options to set for a readable secondary read intent only and yes they are almost the same but with a very small difference and if you don't know that difference then pause this video and click on the link in the description or somewhere here or here understanding that difference is important for today's topic so go watch that one and then come back okay so now that you are back let's talk about read only routing so you have set up your secondary to read intent only or to yes so you can accept read only connections on that but how would you point the connection or uh, route the connection to this secondary or suppose if you have more than one secondary two or three secondaries then maybe you want to load balance these read only connections between them or you want to prioritize one over the other or maybe you want to have a combination of this so we achieve all this by fiddling around a setting and always on that we call as read only routing so in today's video we'll talk about how to configure read only routing and then we'll see a demo that our connections are actually being routed the way we have configured our read only routing and finally we'll talk about some scenarios that could help you to configure read only routing in your environment so that you can offload the primary and make most of your always on availability groups so here's my always on environment i have replica servers sql 001 2 3 3 is an asynchronous commit mode let's say it is placed at a dr side and i have all these three instances listening on default port that is 1433 my listener is also configured on port 1433 that is not recommended because of the security reasons we all know but let's just say that our uh, infra security team is really good they have set up a really powerful uh, firewall between our network and the external network so in that case setting up to default 1433 or something else doesn't matter or does it we'll try to understand that in this video so watch this video till the end you should configure your always on routing when you create an always on group but if you didn't no problem just go to your always on availability group right click and properties if you haven't configured anything then you will see something like this an empty first we need to set up a routing url for each replica so this routing url it starts with tcp and then the replica server name now you can use ip address or fkdn that is fully qualified domain name and i read in some blog that they replaced the fkdn with the ip address and that resolved some issue for them now you shouldn't use ip address always use fqdn if you face some issue because of that then there is some issue in your domain name resolution just ping your host name so i'm pinging ping sql001 when you ping that you should hear a reply that should indicate your ip address as well as the fqdn so here you see a reply from an ip address that is ipv6 and also sql001.nstba.com so that is my fully qualified domain name also to check in reverse just ping fun a and then the ip address so i'm pinging to an ipv4 address and uh, why that is the case we can discuss that in some other video maybe so this is my ipv4 address and if i ping it with an hyphen a option then it should again reply with the domain name if any of these two is not working then reach out to your server team or uh, whoever have built the server for you if this is working fine then you won't face any issues for using fqdn in your routing url so tcp then fqdn so that is sql001 dot nsdba.com and then port number the hadr endpoint is listening on 5022 so i will use this one repeat the same thing with rest of the two replica replace the host name or fqdn of course whenever you do anything like i always say always a good idea to script that out now if you're watching carefully then you might notice something odd here and what is that we'll we'll come to know once you configure this read-only routing url you select one replica 
and then it will list all the possible replicas that you can set up for read only routing i am selecting sql001 so that is the primary now i want that the read only connection should be load balanced between the two secondaries to do that hold control and select the two secondaries both are selected and then click on add they both will be added at the same line or the, at the same priority and then if any of them is not available then i also want that the connection should go to primary so that comes below this repeat the same thing for the rest of the two again let's script it out we are configuring the read only routing url that is done and here if you see at this script it is even more uh, intuitive so if you see here uh, we are going for sql001 and you will see sql002 and 3 they are put within a separate braces so they are load balancing between them and then we are putting sql001 so these are at the first priority and sql001 that is primary that is put at the second priority and if we just run it now our read only routing is configured now let's try to see if our read only routing is actually working you can use odbc connections but since we will be doing it repeatedly i am using a command line so let's go ahead and use sql cmd hyphen s for server so i'm using here you have to use listener name so that is my listener hyphen e for windows authentication and then hyphen d for db name you have to choose a database that is part of your always on availability group and then hyphen k is to specify application intent and in our case that is read only if you hit enter we are getting an error now if you are a junior dba like me then you might be wondering why we cannot use 5022 that is port number from endpoint to explain that we have to understand these networking basics the endpoint what is port number why that is used if you are a junior dba you might be wondering what is all happening and that's okay if you're a senior dba then you must have the exact clear idea what is happening why we are getting this error because of this port number or you could be somewhere in between where you think you know but actually you may not let me ask you this why it is recommended to put dynamic ports when you have read-only routing and dynamic ports when you have so many ports rather than just one fixed port will it help in network performance if yes how if no then why why it is better to have a standard port or the same port for listener as you have for the skill server instance and if you have non-standard port for a listener will browser service help it or it won't so if you struggle to answer any of these questions then you know about networking but you may not understand it that well so from my understanding knowing is important but understanding is even more important knowing may get you through an interview but it will require understanding to fix an issue and it is even more important when you explain the same thing to others when you are explaining you will get so many why why is it so why it's like that and only if you have understanding then you can answer those why so knowing is like digital either you know something or you don't know something one or zero but understanding is kind of analog it has levels you know few things and then you have a level of understanding you know few more things and then you enhance your understanding so understanding can also never be 100 percent but we should try to continually enhance it you may not be interested in all this philosophy and just want to get your read-only routing url configured right well you are in luck so if you go to that that blog they have this really good script and if you run this script on your server then it will tell you everything about your always on configuration 
it will tell you the version number you know the 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 port number your fully qualified domain name even whether you have always on enabled or not and at the end you will get your port number if you look again it is tcp slash fqdn and then 1433 so we have already modified our read only routing urls on correct port 1433 so now if we again try to connect it is connecting and let's try to check what is the server name here the server name is sql003 now let's try to open another connection so again i'll use the same command and i have copied it here and let's again check what is the server name it is 002 again let's do one more time let's check the server name three so we have three connections it went to three two three next should go to two let's check if that is the case so it is working as we configured our read-only routing we have configured the two secondaries in load balancing mode and then to the primary now for a readable secondary to accept a connection it requires three things first it should be enabled to be a readable secondary that is set to read intent only or to yes then it should be part of read only routing list and it should be placed before primary otherwise the connection will go to primary and then the database that we are connecting to should be either in synchronized state or synchronizing state if it is in not synchronizing then it won't connect so let's go ahead and disable data movement on sql002 for database adventure works it is disabled now let's go ahead and try to make a connection Let's see the server name and it is sql003 let's try one more time and again we are going to sql003 why because on 002 we have the database in not synchronizing status now to make sure that read only connections do not go to the primary we can alter this setting so we should put it allow read write connections what if you have just two replica servers and you're always on configuration so we'll try to simulate that so for sql003 i'll just disconnect its network so i'll go ahead to the vm settings and i'll disconnect the network adapter now we have just two replica servers sql001 and sql002 in a three node cluster we can have just one node down if the two nodes are down then the cluster will go down even if you have a witness if you want me to make a video on cluster then go ahead and put a comment so now we have one node down and also if you notice here our database is not synchronizing on 002 now here we'll see something interesting it is kind of simulating a two node cluster 001 002 but on 002 the database is not synchronizing so let's try and create a connection you'll see this error unable to access the adventure works 2019 no secondary replicas are enabled for read only access okay so you'll get this error so if you have a two node cluster then you have to make sure not to change this setting so what is happening you have just two node and uh, the other on other node on 002 the database is not synchronizing so it won't accept a read only connections and for primary you have set to allow read write connection so it is not accepting your read only connection in a two node cluster leave these settings to default 
But yeah, if you have three node cluster and you want to make sure that the read only connection should not go to the primary, then you should change it to read write. Another thing to consider while setting up read only routing list is say if you have a third replica at DR site in asynchronous commit mode with a network delay and your read only queries, they are quick, they complete in a very short time and they are frequent. So many queries are there. And suppose um, there is a network latency of few milliseconds and the queries are also completing very fast in milliseconds. So it would add to the query execution time, which you may not want. So in that case, you should not include your DR site replica with a network latency in your read only routing list. On the contrary, if your read only queries are like some uh, reporting server and um, they have lots of, you know, mathematical operations and all. So they take a long time, say some minutes. In that case, if, if you add a few milliseconds to minutes, then it won't make a difference. And you can use your DR site replica for read only routing. It's very important that you mention application intent equals to read only in all of your read only queries. Because if it's not mentioned, then it will still go to the primary and all of our hard work to configure this read only routing is gonna waste. So you need to talk to developers or all the stakeholders to identify the read only queries and then change the configuration string maybe in web server or whatever to include this application intent equals to read only so that all these queries they are uh, taken separately and being routed to your secondaries you probably also have a reporting server pointing to your always on group so in that case you need to edit the data connections in your uh, in your reporting server and in the data connection properties in your ssrs you should include application intent equals to read only. Now let's come back to our question in my last video, whether we should put readable secondary to read intent only or to yes. Now from all of this, we can understand that there are only very specific scenarios where it would matter. Suppose if you are connecting to secondary explicitly by mentioning the, the secondary's instance name so that maybe, uh, you know, you want to run some ad hoc queries in SSMS. Okay. And you have set it to yes. Accidentally, if you run some read write query, you'll get an error that the database is set to read only. If you put it to read intent only rather than yes, then you have to specify every time even in SSMS that application intent equals to read only. Only then you will be able to connect. And when you are mentioning that application intent equals to read only, chances are you won't run a read write query because at the time of connection itself, you know it is a read only replica. So you will run a read only query. So it's kind of a mechanism to force you to specify that application intent equal to read only in a way it helps you to organize your read only connections or all the connections in general so i hope i help you in understanding this concept of read only routing so that you can use it to offload your primary and make most of your always on environment if you have any additional thoughts any comments if you get any error when you configure in your environment please let me know in the comments. Please also consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you are notified when I'll be making even better videos in future. Also share it with your DVA friends whom you think would be benefited from it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.